Lunchtime, Brainyard. Let's eat. What's on the menu? Mmm, Grandma's homemade maritime seafood chowder. What a treat. Hold on, Brainyard. Slow down. What is that in your spoon? Is that a jellyfish? As in arguably the most venomous animal on the planet? Woohoo! That was a close one. Those tiny suckers apparently hold 100 times more venom than the most dangerous cobra on the planet. Don't worry, we got your back, Brainyard. We know a jellyfish sting can be awfully painful. Cue the infamous scene from Friends featuring Monica Geller shrieking from the pain. But what would happen if you ingested that tiny guy? Would it be a matter of life and death, or would your body be able to pass it like this morning's breakfast? Let's start with what the heck a jellyfish is anyway. This free-swimming, umbrella-shaped marine animal is actually not a fish at all. A fish is specifically centered around the anatomy of its backbone. We know what you're thinking, Brainyard. The folks who named jellyfish had one job, and they couldn't even do that right. Among other marine animals, jellyfish resemble most corals, sea anemones, and sea whips, specifically because of their harpoon-like stinging cell used to capture prey. The cnidocytes on the jelly species are discharged through their tentacles from a sac. Their lethal anatomy allows them to capture floating prey in the water, which is helpful considering that jellyfish have very limited control over their movement. In fact, it's their ability to expand and contract their dome-shaped bodies that give jellyfish their distinct drifting movements. But if you think that their delicate and malleable bodies put jellyfish at a disadvantage, then you would be wrong. This is anything but a gentle and dainty specimen. Archaeologists and other fancy people in white lab coats have discovered jellyfish fossils in rocks believed to be more than 500 million years old, which makes them older than most dinosaurs. It's even possible that the jellyfish lineage goes back even further to over over 700 million years. But wait, it gets better. Remarkably, these resilient creatures have survived this long, despite not having a heart, lungs, or even a brain, which begs the question, how does a jellyfish live without any of these vital organs? Heck, how do they survive if their bodies are made up of as much as 98% water? Good question, Brainyard. The thin nature of its skin allows the creature to absorb oxygen right through their bodies, which evades the need for lungs. And since they don't have any blood coursing through their veins, there's no need for a heart to pump it through the body. While on the subject of jellyfish fun facts, they can even split in half to create a second version of themselves. Imagine if you could do that. I'm sure two versions of you, Brainyard, would get lots of stuff done. At the very least, you'd have a great doubles partner in tennis. So now that we understand the umbrellas of the sea, let's dissect how and why jellyfish sting. Because jellyfish are anatomically vulnerable, their venomous sting acts as a defense and hunting mechanism. When their tentacles encounter food or prey, they reach out and fire a harpoon like structure from within their bodies that contains neurotoxic venom. When it comes to other marine life, it'll paralyze their prey, but when it comes to humans, it'll just really hurt. But why? For one thing, jellyfish have enough venom to disable prey their size. Because humans are bigger, it has a less dramatic effect on our bodies compared to small marine life. But that doesn't mean it won't hurt. Symptoms include an intense stinging pain, itching, rash, and raised welts. So in a word, not pretty. Some other progressive or after after effects of a jellyfish sting include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, lymph node swelling, abdominal pain, muscle spasms, or general numbness, while more severe reactions include difficulty breathing or death. So you know, all the good stuff. But this is all to say that if you were stung by a jellyfish brainyard, you'd most likely survive. There's one more crucial factor one must consider when it comes to jellyfish and their venomous stings, and it's a little game that we like to play. Name that species. Yep, that's right. Hold your spoon right where we can see it because we haven't told you about the box jellyfish yet, which is a whole nother story. This infamous jellyfish is characterized by its more rectangular dome. Their venom is meant to instantly kill or stun prey like fish or shrimp so that their struggle to escape won't damage its delicate tentacles. What makes the box jellyfish unique is its venom specifically attacks the heart, nervous system, and skin cells of the prey. When it comes to how their venom affects humans, the box jellyfish does pose a risk. Human victims have been known to go into shock, drown, or passive heart failure when they're stung in the ocean. Because of the gravity and its need for immediate medical attention, most victims unfortunately do not make it back to shore once they're stung. In fact, each box jellyfish reportedly carries enough venom to KO 60 people. Box jellyfish are considered a more dangerous jellyfish species because of how highly adapted and advanced they are. According to Nat Geo, they've developed the ability to move more swiftly in water. They even have eyes 
eyes with a sophisticated lens, retina, iris, and cornea, which allows them to see. What's interesting is that these guys don't have a central nervous system, so scientists aren't really sure exactly how box jellyfish process what they see. These guys are found mostly off the coast of northern Australia and throughout the Indo-Pacific. Their pale blue and transparent color couples with 15 tentacles that can grow to about 10 feet in length. But luckily for you, Brynir, there's a well-recorded case detailing exactly what would happen. Only this Australian teenager didn't find it in their grandma's chowder. In 2000, a 17-year-old lifeguard from Queensland drank a glass of water containing a box jellyfish tentacle. Apparently, the water was not refrigerated for the sake of quenching hydration, but rather it was a way for researchers to preserve their specimen. As soon as the teenager realized what had happened, he reported having trouble breathing when paramedics arrived just 10 minutes later. In our research, the teenager thankfully did not perish, although his medical condition was considered unstable for a while. Other than that, there seems to be very few reported cases of folks swallowing one of these slimy and spineless guys, but we don't need a medical report to tell us that the end result would not be pretty. But isn't there a rumor out there that dogs accidentally eat jellyfish like all the time? How does it affect our furry companions? Again, it all depends on the species of jellyfish. In one documented case, despite swallowing a jellyfish, the newly admitted dog did not suffer any major symptoms. It did, however, irritate the esophagus, which made the dog reluctant to eat. What's more harmful is the contact between a dog's paw and some short up tentacles. So it seems pretty obvious that swallowing certain venomous jellyfish can be dangerous. But if medical professionals are saying that the chance of survival of those stung by box jellyfish or other dangerous species is virtually zero, then what would we do? Medical professionals claim that the difference between life and death comes down to a few but integral steps. First of all, do not, I repeat, do not panic. Jellyfish stings are very rarely deadly. What is most dangerous is inaction or the wrong course of action, so listen up. Remove any tentacles that are still on the skin using a knife, clean sticks, or whatever is on hand, like a credit card. As you do this, it'll also be important to limit your movements to not spread the venom throughout the body. Next, rinse the affected areas with seawater, not fresh water, to reduce discomfort from the affected area. If you happen to have some vinegar on hand, then dose that stuff on it as well. This will deactivate the stinging cells of most jellyfish, as its acidity will neutralize the sting's alkaline levels. But there's no question that this is painful. To relieve yourself, you can immerse the affected area with hot water. The heat here will inactivate toxins as well. If the pain persists, take Advil or Tylenol to help with the discomfort. Now, remember what we said about cleaning the affected water with seawater and not fresh water? Apparently, there's something in the chemistry of the water that causes the nematocyst to emit more sensations of pain. Similarly, you're not going to want to pee on the affected area. We've all watched that episode of Friends when Joey graciously relieves himself on Monica for the sake of treating her pain, but how effective is it? Fortunately, this is more fiction than fact. For a long time, people thought that since urine contains salts and electrolytes, that it would counterbalance the nematocysts of a jellyfish sting. But because there are so many factors that affect the potency, color, and even contents of our urine, peeing on your affected friend may do nothing more than well, cover your friend in pee. So what should you actually do? If you're stung by a jellyfish in North America, an area with less venomous specimens, then an oral analgesic should do the trick. However, in Australia, which has nastier jellyfish like the deadly box jellyfish, most lifeguard teams are equipped with morphine and antivenoms to treat unlucky swimmers. More recently, a Hawaii-based company had recently developed treatments to provide pain relief and even prevention for jellyfish stings. The main researcher involved did this to help long-distance swimming. Diana Nyad to successfully swim from Havana to Key West in 2013. She'd previously been prevented from achieving this goal by a mere danger of the box jellyfish, but this medical miracle gave her the confidence to swim to great lengths. Another research team is studying whether or not cholesterol-targeting drugs available over the country could block the deadly venom of the box jellyfish. According to Science Magazine, MBCD and HPBCD prevented pain, tissue death, and scarring in mice. Greg Neely the geneticist of the University of Sydney in Australia, was surprised that the drug could block the venom's action given that it's composed of more than 250 proteins. But of course, these are drug tests done on mice. Neely says that the next course of action could be to test whether the cholesterol drugs could protect the heart of live animals. Eventually, he hopes to see the potential antidote to human clinical trials. Neely reports that as soon as it's tested and approved, his
his team will share the findings with another country gravely affected by the deadly box jellyfish, the Philippines. It's estimated that some 500 people die and it's only assumed to get worse. Considering climate change and its tendency to raise ocean temperatures and it's just a matter of time before some problematic encounters come about. But that being said, all in all, there's no reason to be more afraid of a jellyfish than you would be of a wasp or a bee with the proper precautions. The risks and the pain could be minimized, ensuring that you can relax while on vacation. As for the bowl of soup in front of you, we'd suggest walking across the street and buying a new lunch. We don't want to hurt grandma's feelings either, but if her secret ingredient to her famous seafood chowder is jellyfish, then we may need to rethink some things. At the very least, let's just stick to her baking. No jellyfish there. Until next time, Branyard. Later.